Hey, welcome to today's review of the brand new 15-inch laptop, the MSI Thin GF63 and why it's a thin and light, which isn't that mobile actually. No, MSI won't send us laptops anymore. No. Okay, so this specific MSI Thin GF63 12VE comes with an Intel i5 12450H with 4 performance and 4 e-cores as well as a brand new RTX 4050 with 6GB VRAM and in this configuration up to 45W, which in reality often doesn't reach more than 35W, but it's still very capable as we will talk about in a bit. PS, MSI claims that there are also versions of this laptop with an i7, which does not seem to be true for the European market, at least until the making of this video, but you might be able to get one of those where you live. The general build quality of the laptop is alright. The case is made out of aluminum and on the top sides and plastic on the bottom sides. It has a total weight of 22 mm when closed and weighs only 1.68 kg, also known as 4.1 pounds. And that really makes it easy to handle. The design is a bit more subtle and less gamerish than the MSI Katana. It seems like there are similarities with last generation's Katana laptop though. Also considering the hinges, which seemed to be an issue back then according to Jared's tech, but I did not experience any issues uh, yet. Well, as of the release of this video, this MSI Thin in this configuration costs about $1,100 or 1,200 in Euro without a Windows license. There are options including Windows though. PS installing Windows 11 without a LAN cable is problematic as the Wi-Fi drivers did not work. However, as already mentioned in my Katana review, these initial prices should drop quite fast as they seem to be too high. Though other countries might come with a slightly different hardware like 32GB of RAM instead of 16GB and a different i7. For the 15 inch 144Hz full HD display I've measured a maximum brightness of only 277 nits whereas MSI claims it only has 250 nits which is surprisingly a bit brighter than what I measured for the monitor of the more expensive MSI Katana but still not bright enough to use it outside or next to a window on a bright day. The measured color accuracy is relatively low with 69% sRGB and 49% NTSC and 52% um, coverage of the Adobe RGB color space. You won't notice this as a regular user and of course you still can use creative apps like Photoshop or Premiere if you're not a professional that is bound to color accuracy for customers. I was asking the MSI support about the used display panel and they actually gave me a link which I will post in the description. According to this description, it has a response time of around 9 milliseconds, which actually isn't that bad compared to other entry-level gaming laptops. So with high FPS, you should definitely have a relatively low input lag. PS, you cannot open the laptop with one hand like at all. You definitely need two hands for that. The keyboard has a red illumination, no RGB, it does not have a numpad at all. And for me personally, writing did not feel really comfortable as the keyboard is too flat and the key travel was way too short for my taste. It's not very bendable though, so the build quality, as I've mentioned before, seems to be all right. The touchpad is very mediocre, to be honest. The laptop offers a total of three USB 3A ports as well as a USB-C port with display port compatibility, but no Thunderbolt. Furthermore, it offers an unspecified HDMI port, which according to MSI only offers 30 Hz on 4K, so I'm guessing it's HDMI 1.4 only, as well as a LAN port. So the connectivity is about what you'd expect and it allows for two external monitors. But once more, most of the connections are on the right side of the laptop, um, which is suboptimal if you have little space to use your mouse. So, why? P.S. This is what the integrated camera looks like and what the integrated microphone sounds like. The overall sound of the speakers was actually quite okay considering the laptop class. It could use a bit more bass and it's a bit too flat of course, but I was expecting worse. Overall the sound is not terrible compared to the average gaming laptop, but it's not great either. The MSI Control Center allows you to choose between five different presets for fan speed and performance. You can also manually set the fan speed when you are using the extreme performance mode. At full speed, the signal fan is quite hearable, but it's not terrible. If you are using the balanced mode, the laptop is actually really quiet considering it only has a single fan cooling system and the temperatures in gaming stay very acceptable with around 65 to 75 
Celsius for the GPU and 70 to 80 degrees for the CPU at a 21 degrees Celsius room temperature. In silent mode, you'd still get around 85% performance in gaming, but the fan became really quiet and using the battery saving mode, it almost went silent while still providing enough performance for gaming at around 65% performance. So you could definitely tinker around to get a result of your liking. P.S. I was doing all the tests on a laptop stand, so it would get a bit more fresh air from beneath, but no activated fans of that laptop stand. On idle, the laptop can turn completely silent. So if it had a decent battery runtime, it would be great for libraries and school or university, but that's not the case. And we will talk about that in a bit. Overall, the cooling system seems to be pretty good, to be honest, just like in the MSI Katana. The laptop surface didn't get very warm while gaming. It never felt uncomfortable. The Intel i5 12450H is neither the newest nor the fastest CPU MSI could have used for this laptop, but it should be sufficient enough for everyday tasks as well as gaming and even more work-related stuff that needs a faster CPU in general. As a comparison, it is about as fast as a four-year-old i7 9700K or 9900K desktop CPU, just about. While it even has a much better single core performance, it is sporting four P-cores and four E-cores. The P-cores support hyper-threading, allowing for a total of 12 threads. In Cinebench R23, using the performance mode, it reached a maximum of up to 10,925 points in the multi-core test and 1,639 points in the single-core test. These results will drop slightly by around 10% after a few runs due to power limit throttling or temperature throttling, depending on the fan speed. In PC Mark 10, I got a score of 6,341 points plugged in and about 4,754 points on battery when using the performance mode. The built-in 512 GB Samsung PCIe Gen 4 SSD was reaching sequential reading speeds of around 2,900 megabytes per second and writing speeds of around 1,500 megabyte per second in a SSD benchmark. The laptop does not offer a second M.2 PCI Gen 4 slot, but it does have a SATA slot according to MSI. So you would have to swap out the existing M.2 or use an external drive if you want to upgrade that instead of the SATA. But the RAM is upgradable up to 64 GB easily. Just like in the Katana 15D 53 watt hour battery is quite disappointing. Likewise, the laptop does not seem to manage to reduce the power consumption to a minimum. So even on idle with 20% display brightness and activated Wi-Fi, I only once more saw a runtime of five and a half hours. Watching YouTube with 50% brightness using headphones, it only achieved about three and a half hours again. In gaming on battery ended after around 55 minutes, whereas especially CPU intensive games seem to struggle as the CPU is throttled way more than the GPU on battery. If it had a bigger battery, gaming on the go would actually make a bit more sense for this laptop though if you would play lighter titles and titles that don't need um, the CPU that much. P.S. The MSI Control Center allows you to choose a battery conservation mode in the hardware diagnostics section under features to reduce the maximum loading state of the battery to around 60 or 80 percent. When plugged in, the laptop would pull around 100 to 110 watt from the wall while gaming, which is no problem for the included compact 120 watt PSU it comes with. The PSU might differ in other countries, though. P.S. You cannot charge the laptop via USB-C. I actually don't know yet if I'll manage to make a fully dedicated and narrated gaming video on the low-powered 45 watt version of the RTX 4050. But if I do, I will link to it in the description and maybe over here um, or the end card afterwards. So make sure to check that out if that interests you. The dedicated RTX 4050 45 watt is a brand new entry level GPU by Nvidia and it is the first 50 series mobile card to offer 6 GB of VRAM, which is finally acceptable for full HD gaming, at least for a while. The laptop does not offer a MUX switch. Spoiler upfront. Overall, it is safe to say that you can play any existing video game as of the making of this video with at least 60 FPS on this laptop, depending on the settings, of course. But thanks to Nvidia's frame generation technology, newer titles that support DLSS 3.0 can provide a noticeable extra boost if this tool is activated. 
I really loved the feature and it didn't seem to have any visual problems except for some in-game menus that sometimes produce weird artifacts if frame generation is activated. But just like in the Katana 15 with the RTX 4050 85 watt, I had the impression that the MSI Thin suffered from bad frame times in some games. That means that despite high FPS or high average FPS in a few games, I was often seeing some stuttering and frame drops. I'm still not sure if it's an issue of these laptops or if the NVIDIA drivers haven't been optimized for the new Ada Loveless architecture by NVIDIA. Also, other videos on YouTube suggest that not all 4050s have these frame time issues. And now we are going to have a quick look at the performance in some games. P.S. I was recording these via Shadowplay, so you could add around 2 to 3 FPS without the recording. I was actually trying Cyberpunk 2077 on high settings with RTX on, so ray tracing was active, while using frame generation and DLSS on quality, which resulted in somewhat playable FPS of around 44 on average and a 1% low of 22 FPS. Of course, you could get much higher frame rates when not using ray tracing, but I just wanted to show you that this laptop is actually capable of some ray tracing gameplay if you are willing to use um, frame generation and DLSS in combination. In Hogwarts Legacy, I was using the high graphics preset combined with DLSS quality and turned off frame generation and still saw a great average of 62 FPS and the 1% low of 28, which on the other hand isn't great. But it's still playable just fine. But Hogwarts Legacy still does have some issues here and there, which aren't related to the MSI Thin in general. If you want, you can always turn on frame generation, of course, and receive a noticeable extra boost of FPS. For Call of Duty Warzone, I was using the recommended balance settings in combination with the DLSS quality once again and saw an average of 86 FPS and a good 1% low of 50 FPS. That is absolutely playable and you could easily gain more FPS by using lower settings and or also using DLSS in balanced or performance mode, in which case you'd get around 100 FPS on average instead. In God of War, I saw an average of 65 FPS and a 1% low of 38 FPS on high settings and using DLSS on quality mode. Perfectly playable. In that case, I would actually suggest using a 60 FPS cap to get an even smoother experience. Actually, the MSI Thin is perfectly capable of playing AAA games of the early 20s, in my opinion. I've also tested World of Warcraft for a change and on the highest preset with some anti-aliasing, I saw an average of around 110 to 140 FPS in most areas with very high 1% lows of around 90 FPS. Of course, in newer areas and rates, the FPS would be lower, but this laptop eats World of Warcraft for breakfast considering this was the highest possible setting. Of course, you can play any lighter eSport titles like CSGO, Overwatch, Valorant, or let alone League of Legends. They will all run with high FPS in the triple digits for sure, easily. In Blender, I was comparing the NVIDIA 45W RTX 4050 mobile of this laptop with the 85W RTX 4050 in the Katana 15 and the RTX 4060 in an MSI Katana 17. And surprisingly, it was almost as fast as its more powerful 85 watt counterpart. Using Blender with the RTX 4050 45 watt is absolutely possible, but you will have some issues when you're trying to render very big composings as the VRAM of only 6GB will be too small, which especially applies when you are using the even faster optics renderer, because then it often won't finish the render. In that case, you could always use the CPU to render instead, which would take longer, but it will use a regular bigger RAM of your laptop and manage to finish the render. So, well, overall, I would say that for a price of around $1,100 or €1,200, the new MSI Thin GF63 is still a bit too expensive. And it's somehow like it can't decide um, if it wants to be a thin and light laptop or a budget entry-level gaming laptop. If you are looking for a rather mobile and lighter laptop, an Acer Swift X might actually be a better choice at as they usually provide much better battery times and they will soon include the new RTX 4000 series as well while also having a much better screen as it seems. I'm going to try to review them on this channel so make sure to subscribe if you want to see that. If the MSI Thin had a bigger battery, a better screen and keyboard, I would have an easier time recommending it considering the price. 
Overall the performance is alright considering it's a rather thin and light laptop though. It is easy to transport but you will always need to rely on charging um, the laptop. So I'm not really sure which audience MSI is trying to target with these kind of laptops. But maybe you can let me know in the comments why you think the MSI Thin GF63 is the right laptop for you. I'm eager to learn. Okay, that's all for today. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more reviews, GPU tests and other stuff. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and cheers.